My dearly beloved in Christ, as you know, Holy Mother Church refers to the final two weeks of Lent as Passiontide, although it's part of Lent, it is like a season unto itself of two weeks in which our purpose should be to concentrate on the passion of our Lord, to meditate upon, to reflect upon his passion and death more so than we have done up to this point during this season of Lent. And we call to mind the tremendous sacrifice of our Lord dying in our place. Now, I'm sure you've heard the story of that wonderful, holy Franciscan priest, Father Maximilian Kolbe. Now, Father Kolbe was a Polish Franciscan priest who was arrested by the Nazis and put into the infamous prison camp in Auschwitz, Poland, southern Poland. And one day, a prisoner escaped from that camp and the German commandant of the camp was so angry, he lined up all of the prisoners and he said, because this man escaped, I'm going to execute 10 prisoners in his place. And they went down the list and they, down the row, and they picked out 10 of the prisoners. And he said, these are going to be executed in place of that prisoner who escaped. And one of the men broke down and began to cry and emotionally so affected because he had a wife and young children and, of course, was hoping he would be able to survive the prison camp and go home after the war. And Father Colby saw this and he stepped out of line and he went right up to the general and he said, I would like to die in this man's place. I offer my life. I want him to live. And that's exactly what was done. He was executed with the other nine. And he died in place of that one prisoner who had been selected to die. Now that's a tremendous act of charity, a tremendous sacrifice. But that's a little bit of an idea, it gives us a little bit of an idea what our Lord did for us. He died in our place. He offered his life so that we might live eternally. And of course, the death of our Lord on the cross was terrible, painful, beyond description. We should often reflect upon the passion of our Lord as a means of helping us grow in love for him but also to help us to conquer sin, which is the cause of his passion and death. We find this in the lives of saints. So many of them would have a crucifix that would often be in their hands. And they would look at the crucifix and meditate upon the love of our Lord that led him to lay down his life for us. And would kiss the wounds on the image of our Lord on the crucifix. That is a good thing to do. As a number of saints said, the crucifix is my book. It is there that I read the love of God for me. Our Lord himself said, greater love than this no man has that a man lay down his life for his friends. And our Lord again has done that for us. So let us reflect upon his passion and death and let us reflect upon the fact that in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we have the unbloody renewal of the passion and death of our Lord on the cross. And we must not forget that, that the Mass is, as it were, Calvary renewed, but in an unbloody manner. On the cross, our Lord shed his blood. He died physically. He died on the cross for our salvation. And he died once for all. We do not need to be redeemed again. Our Lord's precious blood was of infinite value. His sacrifice was of infinite value. Enough to redeem all mankind and even a hundred more worlds if there were. But in the Mass, 
the graces that he earned for us on Calvary are applied to us. And so the Mass is, again, a sacrifice. Now, in the Old Testament, there were many sacrifices of different animals in the temple. And the Jewish people were permitted by God to have these sacrifices only in one place. And that was in the temple in Jerusalem. And there were, again, many sacrifices. And all of those sacrifices had no value whatsoever except in that they foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of the death of our Lord on the cross. They were symbolic of the eventual sacrifice of our Lord. And there are many places in Scripture, we've put some of the quotations on the bulletin, the back of the bulletin over the last few weeks, about how our Lord was like a lamb led to the slaughter, and that he did not open his mouth. He offered himself because it was his own will. By his bruises, by his stripes, we are healed. He was like a leper and not a man, like a worm trodden underfoot. All of these different prophecies that help us to understand the depth of the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. But again, remember that in the Mass, it is the same sacrifice because the victim is the same. Although our Lord no longer sheds his blood, he is there under the appearances of bread and wine. And the priest is the same. The ordained priest takes the place of Christ, who is the principal priest at every Mass. And of course, our Lord instituted the sacrifice of the Mass at the Last Supper. And we know that that idea of his sacrifice of his death is intimately connected with every Mass. Listen to the words of our Lord when he consecrated the bread and the wine. He said, giving thanks, he broke and said, this is my body which shall be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So that idea, this is my body which shall be given up. That was that idea of the passion was there in his mind at the Last Supper. This is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. And so the Mass is the perpetuation, the renewal, the unbloody renewal of the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. In the Old Testament, there's a quote I've used before, a wonderful quotation from Malachi, the prophet. And he said, From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, my, great is a, my name is great among the Gentiles, for in every place there is offered sacrifice to me. Now you can imagine how strange that was for the Jews in the Old Testament to hear that prophecy, because they were told the sacrifices could only be in the temple at Jerusalem. And now it's, my name is great among the Gentiles, and the, ma and the sacrifice is being offered everywhere, a sacrifice pleasing to God. And, of course, that is exactly what takes place. Because given the different time zones around the world, we might be in the middle of the night here in the western United States, and somewhere in the world, Mass is being offered. So there's the continual sacrifice. And it is a reminder to us of our Lord's death on the cross. So, when you attend the holy sacrifice of the Mass, imagine that you are there at the foot of the cross with our Blessed Mother and St. John and St. Mary Magdalene witnessing our Lord offering his life to his Father for our redemption. Let us appreciate and value the Mass. And let us also reflect often upon the terrible passion of our Lord, to look at our crucifix and realize what that means. That our Lord was like this priest who died for someone else. He died for us. He who had no sin died in our place. There's a wonderful prayer called the prayer before a crucifix. I'm sure most of you use it. You're familiar with it. It's in your missiles. And the wonderful thing is not only is it a beautiful prayer about the passion of our Lord calling to mind his wounds in his hands and his feet and side, but there is a plenary indulgence 
granted for praying that prayer after your reception of communion. But you are to look at a crucifix or the image of our Lord on the cross when you pray that prayer. And that is why most missiles will have a picture of the crucifixion of our Lord on the same page as that prayer so that you can look at that image when you say it in order to gain the indulgence. But let us all renew our resolve today with just two weeks remaining to make a good Lent and in particular to especially concentrate on the passion and death of our Lord and his tremendous love which led him to lay down his life in our place so that we might live with him eternally. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.